This is one of the first free black towns in the Americas, San Basilio de Palenque, Colombia. Listen to the drums, explore the murals, and study the dancing. It was founded around 1603 by self-liberated Africans who escaped from the slave ports of Cartagena, Colombia. Spanish colonizers relentlessly tried to destroy this town, but centuries later, it's still standing. And this is the only black president Colombia has had. They purposely erased him from history books. Government officials even sent his official presidential portrait to Paris to whiten his appearance. You may not have expected to find stories like these in Latin America. See, the dominant narrative is that racism doesn't exist in the region, just class issues. And I'm here to tell you, that is a lie. Pero que no hay negros en la Argentina. It's a very convenient cop-out for Latin America and for Latinos, Latines, to say, well, it's not as bad as the U.S., and they're right. It's worse. This is a story about Latin America's long and brutal history of erasing and silencing Black populations and its ploy to whiten society. Here's the thing. Anti-Blackness is so deeply ingrained in the Latin American region that it's often ignored or defended. Like in the case of Dominican baseball player Sammy Sosa, who downplayed using a bleaching cream that whitened his skin. From Peruvian newspapers using 159 different racist adjectives to describe African-descended people, to terms of endearment like mi negrita, which actually stem from the idea of people as property, to blackface used as a form of entertainment. It's all part of a slew of everyday racism. There is plenty of evidence showing that racism is rampant in Latin America, but many Latin Americans have evaded accountability by treating racism as solely a U.S. problem. Unlike the U.S., where racism was upheld by legal separation like Jim Crow laws, you're not, you're not a Texan if you're not for segregation. Countries including Colombia, Mexico, and Brazil encouraged the mixing of different racial types, known in Spanish as mestizaje. As a result, this ideology of mixing has been used for centuries to deny the presence of Black and Indigenous people throughout the region. This idea that everyone is mixed also has been completely overblown because Latin America is not unique in its mixedness, but that has been the mantle that it has taken, up, taken upon itself so that they, you can evade accountability. How can we be racist if we're all mixed? Well, you certainly found a very many ways to be. Meet Dash Harris Machado. She's Panamanian-American and the producer of Negro, a docu-series about Latino identity. We all know those, those, um, those sayings. You're, you're treating me like a Black person, uh, trabajar como, como un negro, working like a Black person. Don't marry a Black person, come on. Be serious, again. And everybody knows these sayings. This is from, this is every single last country. Like, stop playing with us. Stop playing in our faces. To understand how deep anti-Blackness runs in the region, let's go back a couple of centuries, starting with the wars of independence from Spain for the region now known as Latin America. Meet Simon Bolivar. He's considered the great liberator of Latin America. But he wouldn't have liberated anything if it wasn't for the help of Haiti, where a rebellion by enslaved Africans created the only free republic in Latin America and the Caribbean at the time. Haitian President Alexandre Pition agreed to help Bolivar on his quest for liberation under one condition. If Bolivar won, he had to abolish slavery and the new republic he was fighting for. Bolivar agreed, and a few years later, he defeated Spain throughout South America and declared himself president of present-day Colombia, Venezuela, Panama, Ecuador, Peru, and Bolivia. Around 60% of soldiers who fought for Bolivar were Black, but Bolivar betrayed them. His promise to completely abolish slavery was a lie. He even complained that Black soldiers were audacious to want absolute equality. They had to wait 40 years after the war to gain their freedom. Bolivar and many other white elites 
feared that they would eventually be outnumbered by black and indigenous people. So he maintained Latin America's colonial, racial, and class hierarchy to keep control among the white elites. Bolivar believed in liberation, but only for some. Whites will not give up anything to black people, or in general, unless it benefits them more. We're talking about a definite racial and social stratification that was um, the foundation of the region and in which the region still adheres to. Nothing has changed. Anti-Blackness was baked into the foundation of the region, but that anti-Blackness didn't stop with Bolivar. See, the emancipation of slavery was a threat to the social hierarchy in Latin America. So white elites came up with a plan to systemically, physically, and culturally wipe out Black people. How did the region do it? Mass white European immigration while banning the immigration of non-whites. Welcome to the Blancamiento and Brancamiento period, which literally mean to whiten. The goal was for future generations to no longer have visibly Black and Indigenous people, so that the national identities in these new nations would be associated with whiteness. In this period, elites aimed to make Black people disappear through their gradual absorption into the white race. Over 10 million European immigrants settled in Latin America between 1880 and 1930, with 90% of them going to Argentina, Uruguay, Cuba, and Brazil. Brazil even went as far as to pay for transportation costs from Europe and passed a law making European immigrants automatic citizens as soon as they arrived. European immigrants were given preference over Black people in jobs, housing, and education. And and the impacts of this are still felt today. Today, over 78% of Afro-Brazilians live below the poverty line. There have been many attempts to resist the relentless oppression of Black people in Latin America. In Brazil, the unified Black movement has challenged racial and class discrimination since the 70s. And in Colombia, Francia Marquez has led the battle for Afro-Colombian land rights since she was 15. She gave a voice to people who didn't feel represented by the white elites who ruled Colombia for centuries. And in 2022, she was elected Colombia's first black vice president. Después de 214 años, logramos un gobierno del pueblo. El gobierno de los nadies y las nadies de Colombia. So the policies aimed at erasing Black people from society failed, but they successfully created many obstacles that prevented Afro-descendants from accessing land, education, and the labor market. And that's why you can't talk about the current conditions of Black people in Latin America without acknowledging the centuries of discrimination, racism, and oppression. Dash says that in order for anti-Blackness to be dismantled, People have to give up power. Our power needs to be seized. Because we're talking about lived and material conditions when we're talking about anti-Blackness. It's not just simply someone not liking me because they are anti-Black. We're talking about systems that decide people's life and if you will even have a life. This means it's not just about acknowledging and celebrating Black people's contributions in Latin America during festivals or national holidays, but about reparations and setting up systems that actually benefit Black communities. It's about repair and transformation. And it cannot be, it cannot be up to the same people who benefit from my subjugation. Despite these challenges, Black people throughout Latin America continue to fight for equality. And just like San Basilio de Palenque, Black communities are still standing.